Hello everyone, I'm Katherine Gonzalez, and welcome to another edition of Canyons News. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. Although millions have already gotten their COVID vaccines, there are still some who don't want to get vaccinated. Here's Joshua Christopher with more details. I'm Joshua Christopher here at Canyons News. For almost a year and a half, shielded from the world due to COVID-19, vaccines are on the rise. However, citizens are skeptical about taking it and which one to get. Here with COC student athlete and frontline worker, Ruben Arojo, we'll talk about why he chose not to receive the vaccine, how serious he takes the pandemic, and how is it living at home with his family? The reason why I didn't get vaccinated was because I've been hearing that the vaccinations had side effects like uh, paralysis on one side of the face or uh, getting blood clots. Um, so that's why I didn't want that to affect my um, or affect me being able to play football or being able to go to school. And I wanted to just stay healthy. Uh, so far, I've been doing pretty good without the vaccine. So, you know, always wearing my mask, um, sanitizing the entire time. Like any new vaccine, it's always good to be cautious and do your own research. It's important we continue to wash our hands, wear a mask, and keep ourselves, including our family, and friends safe at all times. Being a uh, part-time employee at Starbucks and practicing living with my family, I took COVID very seriously. Um, I made myself very cautious when I do things or when I go out because um, I'm going to bring everything back here to where I live. And I don't want my little sister, my brother, my mom getting anything. Local businesses are continuing COVID-19 safety protocols. And now that vaccines are open to the public, frontline workers will be able to have access firsthand. Even those who are vaccinated can still be exposed to the virus. Governor Gavin Newsom says we should all continue with the social distance and sanitize at all times. For Canyons News, I'm Joshua Christopher. Exploring the importance of mental health, here's Kyle Kawamoto. Mental health is always an important topic in today's modern day world, stemming from the everyday life of your average teenager to elderly adults to even the children. Fellow COC Cougar Larry Schaller of the National Association of Social Workers is always there to help those that struggle with mental health. From College of the Canyons to the radio room of KHTS, Larry is always there finding a way to help others in times of hardship and struggle. So it's good to sort of talk about it, you know, just to, to you know, just meet with somebody that's a professional person that's, you know, kind of knows college students that's been there before. We've all been in college, you know, we sort of know what it's like, you know, we know it's stressful. <laughs> like many others, COVID has been troubling for some people during this time. Larry would find different ways to communicate and help students out as much as he can, finding the best possible way for them to communicate and get the help that they need. We make sure that people know that it's private, it's confidential. Um, we're also seeing people on the phone, so we all got you know Google numbers that we could use that students feel comfortable um, texting or Googling over. You know, Suicide is always an important topic anywhere and anytime. Being mindful of those around is always important. Because even the simplest greeting to someone can make the biggest difference. And if you're feeling suicidal, if you're feeling like you're thinking about suicide and that, it's really important, right? Because, you know, it can be really, uh, it, can, it can be really intense. And the suicide Prevention Lifeline, I, you know, it's 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255. Looking out for your loved ones and making sure that their mental health is good is always and will always be important. Reporting for Canyons News, I'm Kyle Kalamoto. This volunteer organization has helped Santa Clarita families for decades. With more, here's Brooklyn Auden. Since 1989, the Assistance League has been helping children and families in need in the Santa Clarita Valley. We all feel very strongly about our mission statement, which is to benefit families and to transform lives. The volunteer organization raises this money mainly through their resale store. Our business model, if that's what you would call it, is donations from our community, which are very generous, come in through our back door. 
and then our volunteers sort things, prize things, and get them ready to go out onto the sales floor. And then our customers come in through the front door and buy them. So I always say that the back room from the back gate to the front sales floor and out the front door, that's how it drives our store. And that's what makes it possible for us to serve Santa Clarita citizens in the way we do. Just this month, the Assistance League has been able to relocate their operation to a brand new building. Assistance League Santa Clarita has had a dream for literally decades of having our own store, our own chapter headquarters. We had been renting on Main Street for over 20 years and it was time now to find something and financially we were at a place where we could actually do that. On May 17th, they opened the doors to their new building and look forward to this new chapter of helping the people of Santa Clarita. Assistance League volunteers are fantastic and when you need something, they come forth and they truly did. For Canyons News, I'm Brooklyn Otten. This antique store is filled with hidden gems. I had the opportunity to stop by and take a closer look. Rooster's Relics is an antique store in Santa Clarita with some of the oldest items in the country. Meet Rita Hood, the owner of the store. We opened five and a half years ago. Um, my husband and I had a booth at, up in Little Rock and we ended up growing that to three booths. And then uh, because we are here in Santa Clarita, we wanted to open up something closer to home. There are all kinds of vintage finds. Some of the oldest items date back to the 1800s. Uh, we do get things from the 1800s. Um, we uh, have quite a bit of items from the 20s and 30s, and then um, per a lot from the 60s and 70s. Because if you think about the people that are aging out now, that are downsizing, and they built their homes and, and um, um, shopped for their homes in the 50s and 60s. So we have quite a bit of that era. The store closed down during COVID-19, but Rita found a creative way to continue selling. So during the pandemic, we were closed. Um, we, did, um, we did start selling outdoor pottery uh, to um, landscapers and landscapers are considered an essential worker so because of that um, we ended up being open on weekends for the pottery out front. Rita has one main goal for the antiques she sells. We just want to keep uh, providing good service and finding unique items and, and getting them into good homes. With Canyons News, I'm Katherine Gonzalez. Make sure to follow us at Canyons News on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Once again, reporting for Canyons News, I'm Katherine Gonzalez.